listen to the recording tomorrow or later within the next what month? Jot down notes of what happens, or you can type them in your little handy handy guide. Or you can just type them as we're talking. You just put Brady said this, Tiffany said this. Or, not just, or, just, or, just, or just this with the stuff. Just read the example of minutes that have been done and you'll get an idea of how they're yeah, done. Yeah, it's, it's simple. It's, it's, it's just summary. It doesn't, it's a summary, summary of what was said. So you guys are messing with me, right? <laughs> no. no, no it's, it's, it's not hard to do. Do you volunteer for this? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, in, it's, in, it's in the rules that we're about to pass. <laughs> JP, do you want me to try to type too? That way you've got two things to look at, or? I think he's going to do the minutes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's just a basic summary. It's very, it's very laid re- back. We got the recordings going? Yep. Yeah. All right. It is 7-11. Call the meeting to order. We'll take roll. Uh, I, John Martin is here. JP. <laughs> Tiffany's <laughs> other. <laughs> sure, thanks, Tommy. Tommy Grant, present. Beth McFarlane, present. Terry O'Connor, present. Brady Oxender. Um, so, first thing is approval of the minutes. Um, we're just going to do not the two work session minutes because we're going to uh, amend those and approve them at the next meeting. So, if we can take a look at the January 18th minutes, uh, we'll entertain a motion for approval. Oh, wait, what am I doing? So moved. I would entertain a second. Second. No. Okay. We got it with it. Any, uh, any reason they shouldn't be approved? Hearing none, they are approved. Moving on to the village code updates. I actually want to swap things around and do um, some new business real quick just to approve our rules for the meeting uh, we had sent out. Um, one small change, well, pretty much one small change, uh, and that just takes the role of secretary and makes it um, to serve at the call of the chair, which means that the chairperson gets to pick who the uh, who the secretary is for each meeting. My plan is uh, before the next meeting to just put out a, a schedule by month so that non-voting members will have have more advanced notice than I just gave. Uh, and, and know, you know, if there's two meetings that month, you'll be the secretary for both of them. If there's one, you'll be it for one. Um, so that is really the only change other than um, we're going to make sure that we send everything that we produce here to uh, the village administrator as well, just so that our rules reflect that we want all this stuff put on the website in a, in a timely fashion. And that's, that's on us, not not her. So if we just send them to her quickly, she'll get them up. So I would entertain any questions, comments, discussion. Actually, I have a question. I know on this, when we have um, section two, item A, where we have meeting agendas and associated materials sent out a minimum of 24 hours prior to the meeting. I mean, I can under, I know when we talked about it earlier, I mean, I understand the agenda and that kind of stuff not being submitted 24 hours, but I would appreciate it if we could have documents that we're going to be reviewing as in variances or, or even like the presentation from the village or from Westerville schools, like if we could get those like the Friday before so that we could review them and have some good questions to ask before the meeting. I would agree with that. Yeah, I was actually going to say that as well as like at least 48 hours would be <laughs> helpful or like I like your Friday ahead of time because it is, it's like so hard when you get them on Tuesday night and then we all work Wednesday morning and then immediately coming here, there's no time to like yeah, process. Yeah, and I know that there's an issue with when documents yeah. are actually Sometimes right. I, I would say, you know, sometimes from the staff standpoint, because it's shortened hours, that yeah. we're not working 40 hour weeks, so one is aware from the record, uh, about a third of that. 
we would like, at least until the Monday, sometimes we've got to catch up on a weekend based on what's happened the week before. So by Monday morning, I think is reasonable. And, I, and like this last one, I was able to get out by Sunday. Right. Right. So I'll, I'll work over the weekend if I need to get things caught up. Um, yeah, I mean, so the, the reality of this is, is, is that, mm -hmm. right? And so if we leave it at 24 hours with an aspirational goal that we get them out as soon as possible, but ultimately, you know, when, when we get them, we get them, and then if we need to suspend the rules, we suspend the rules. Um, mm. I agree that it would be great to have this stuff earlier. Mm. I also, you know, Eric and I have these these conversations before our meetings, and it's like, yeah, I'm, I, Eric I, mean, said, I, yeah, have, I have know. meetings every Monday night, and I go out of town usually on Tuesdays. So, yeah, that when they're issued that time, I have no time to review them really. All right. Um, I don't have a, I don't have a good idea for a fix. It's, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a, mm -hmm. it's a man hours issue that, that the village has seemingly mm -hmm. in, in more, more positions than one. Is 24 hours kind of what's there for like most of the other stuff? Like even council wise, is that what you We have the same, yeah, we have the same ongoing, um, you know, and, and at the end of the day, if you don't have enough, I mean, I, I'm going to say this on record, if you don't have enough time to review them and you're not comfortable, then you say that you're not comfortable yeah. because council has done that. Um, they do it anytime that they don't feel that they can make a good decision with the information they were given in the best interest of the village. So that is what it is. The main understanding for a lot of people, you know, when we bring documents, I'm not going to, this is plain and intended, so I don't want to go too far into it, but we're at the mercy of a lot of people. So you know, when you're trying to you're trying to help a school get to the next step, um, you know, they're trying to put all their stuff together. They're trying to get it to us. We have to review it before we can <coughs> throw it to you guys um, and see if we have questions internally. So you know, there's a process behind a lot of those kind of things. It, it, we get them to you guys as soon as we possibly can, but unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't get to us until. Um, even myself, I'm part time. So I, I, I trust me, my hours are not part time. But you know, I'm I find myself on Saturdays and Sundays doing this past weekend. Mm -hmm. Saturday and Sunday was busy, just as busy as Tuesday. Um, so we do try to get them out. Council is battling the same mm -hmm. thing. Um, you know, when when we're at the mercy of the mail and different things like that as well. When you get a very, you know, when you get something that's mailed to you and it comes in that morning. Council only meets twice a month. We only meet once to twice a month. So we might be trying to push something to get it in here, to get it approved or to get it done so other people can move forward with the things that they need to do because we don't have another meeting for 30 more days. So, you know, it's it's not a good answer, um, but the only answer I have is if you're not comfortable, you know, you have, that's what you're sitting here for. And as a voting member, if you don't feel comfortable enough to vote for something, then don't um, abstain or, you know, you can say for the record, we just got it, and you know, this is something that you know the residents. I, I don't feel comfortable doing it, and I will say again, council has had to do that in the past, and you know, a lot of these, a lot of these things are not earth shattering or don't really affect, um, you know, for council. A lot of times, it just has to do with collecting money. So again, it's you know, it's sometimes we just don't have that 48, 72 hours as much as we want it. We just don't, but you don't have to, you know, you. You're sitting there, you have to do with what you're comfortable with. And I'm thinking with myself, is every you know, meeting going to be 172 page no. legal <laughs> document? <laughs> no, right. 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 Yeah. The document was pretty much presented as it was, and we had some changes. The last one that's incorporated, right? So it's not it's not like the first time we're seeing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I get it. In, in something like a variance, though, and, and I understand Beth's comment, we want to get that to you earlier than later. As soon as we Typically, as soon as they have application, you know, we, we have to give them, they have to go 30 days, and we can get you the whole application materials right. fairly quickly. Um, and then sometimes they're still submitting things last minute. That's where we sometimes run into right. shenanigans. Right. So. But yeah, I mean, some things are reviewed by him, then they're reviewed by the attorney, and then they're put back to him, and then that might even go to the engineer. So again, there's just a lot of a lot of hands in the pot mm -hmm. on some of these kind of things. But we I know we, yeah. we do try. I mean, um, that was one of the comments I had on in going through and kind of like reviewing the entire document was that part about timing, if someone's submitting a variance, 
And then it talks about, you know, that it won't be reviewed until all the information is there. But then there's not another section saying that until all the information is complete, the clock doesn't start ticking. I mean, that's the other thing is, and a lot of zoning codes are written like that. It's like the clock on the 30 days doesn't start ticking until you submit a complete right. application. That actually, that's a reasonable comment to make, and that's, that's an interesting thing to point out. We don't recommend that gets changed, right, in the code, because if we have to hold someone to a key piece of information, we want the code to say that. What we try to do, typically, especially with our residents, is be reasonable from given the fact that they're, you know, sometimes people don't have professionals helping them. Sometimes yeah. there's, there's timing issues. We, we, we try to be, it, it, it's a flex issue, right? So if we're comfortable enough, and you're comfortable enough, then everybody's good. If there's something that wasn't done properly, and it is a showstopper, then we can we'll fall back on that code and say, nope, we got we to wait for the next. Yeah, but see, our, co case. our code doesn't say anything. I know. It's really vague. Yeah. yeah. It just says submit it 21 days before, or Does 10 days before the next meeting. I would say, I would say since the variances are, are direct, direct, direct related to council's final approval, it's a very fair comment. I would recommend you type that up. This council's going to have this code for another three months, mm -hmm. right before they have you know a final reading on it, and we'll forward that to them as part of the process because they're going to have to have a public hearing and all this stuff anyway to change the zoning code at this at this level anyway. So that mm -hmm. all that will be considered. So let's let's hold off for one. Right. One and a half minutes on that conversation. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Do we want to brainstorm thoughts on the rules? Do we want to pass the rules and then we'll move on to the code discussion? So what are thoughts on accepting our rules for the year? Or trying to figure out if there's something different we want to do for this section A or B? I'm, I mean, yeah. I know that everybody tries to the best of their ability to get the documents and things like that out. I mean, I'm, I, like he said, I think it's changing it in there. Definitely hold your hands for what could potentially be not an issue in most circumstances. Mm -hmm. So I would hate to tie our hands and slow down the process even more for something. Again, they have the ability to say no. So if it's brought to them too late. So I mean, I hate to make it mandatory and then it's something that we, that really wasn't that big of a deal. And I don't, I don't mean it that way, but it's, you get where I'm going with this. Okay. If you put it in there, your hands tied. Okay, well, I'm fine with that. I mean, if I, if something comes and it's, you know, mm -hmm. two days before, I'm just gonna say I abstain yeah. and not vote on it. Cause I just don't, if I don't feel comfortable yeah. voting on it. Yeah. Okay, That's is there fine. a motion to approve the rules? So moved. Second. I second the motion. Okay. Um, any opposition? Okay. But these will be our rules for the year. Moving on to uh, the code. Yes, hey, sir. Um, everyone has got the code a few days ago. Uh, there were some changes as discussed in the last meeting that was incorporated between Jesse and myself. Um, this is comments were there for anyone to review. A lot of this is, as I think you noted, a couple places. He's comfortable enough with it going up to council, as it will be in front of council for a number of months at this stage, um, as it will go through their, their committee. If the other things come up from this body, as you think of later, by all means, there's plenty of time to make adjustments, and I would recommend to get the ball rolling and we um, this body approves that and recommends uh, it to council. Um, I'm wondering if we can, you know, so this is the document that we're looking to right. simply recommend. Um, I'm wondering if we can amend this. In the um, Yeah. Uh, if we can amend this just to ask the what legislative committee that it will go to right. to take a good hard look at um, the timing that Beth just brought up right. so that we're not we're not necessarily trying to solve it at this point. We're trying to get it in front of the folks who are actually making the decision, but asking them to think about it. Well, the other thing, so in this, so we changed it around, right? So that we're the body that hears the variances and we approve the variances and then the appeal goes to council? No. 
So variances in the normal sense still function the way they're supposed to. For instance, you make a recommendation on a variance to the council. What you're referring to is the change in the, the rest of the what we call the legacy district of the village. And that actually shortens up a resident's time frame and makes it less onerous, right? Because we have so many, we have at the moment, we have uh, everything's a non conforming situation. And so when, a, when they want to change something that is, uh, we'll call it significant on the property, we want to add a you know, accessory structure, which actually we had an application today for variance, and I'm talking to the gentleman that you might be better off by the time you get to a variance that you we might have this passed by then, you know, in three months. So same amount of time will go by. And so he'll have the opportunity to come before you, as an example, and say, hey, I want to put in this accessory structure. And you, as a body, will look at it. And if everybody's good with it, you are the administrative approval at this stage, right? Because it's a plan district. So everything at this point, if the zoning code will be accepted, will be a conforming use and lot, right? And so you will review it. and. Talk to you know neighbors are coming in and do all the things and it'll be similar to a variance, but you'll have the ability to you know basically administratively approve it and everything's good. If you deny it, they have the ability to appeal to council at that point, right? So there's an appeals process that still goes on, just like if I made a decision on someone's shed and said no. Nope, yeah, I get all, I get all that. I'm all sorry. Right. I, my point was is throughout this document it goes back and forth. Okay. So there's. Uh, of like who's doing the appeals and who's yeah. doing the there's different, there's different There's different examples and different time frames and different portions of the code that people uh, appeal, okay. right? So the administrative appeal, for instance, if we make a decision on a permit review on standard one, say offense, someone doesn't like what we told them, they appeal to council. That's how it works at that point. Okay. In any appeal, the mayor makes a decision, her decisions are appealable to council. And then so forth. They don't like council's decision, it goes to court of common common. Right, so downtown somewhere. So if we make an, if we make a, so if we're making a decision only in what the legacy, the, the legacy section, that's the only area that this body, at this time, it's proposed that we make that decision. That's the only one that they can appeal to council on. Is that right? Right. Everything else they actually need to get approved. Everything else is recommending. To council. So if I have just a variance somewhere else, and I don't like what planning and zone, well, and then it's recommended to council, right. so you and I don't that. like what council's saying, then it has to go to the court of appeals. Right. There's no intermediary body like planning and zoning, no, we don't the village, and then we don't BZA here in this in this situation the way it's set up. So the, there's no board of zoning appeals. Which in other municipalities they set up a board zoning appeal independent of the planning zoning commission and council. And in some cases it goes to council for the appeal. In some cases okay. it jumps out of the BCA to the court. Okay. Okay. Well, the township has it. They have something similar to this. Okay. Okay. Wow. And that's for variances. Right. All right. Well, then, so all these conflicting things that I found. I should write up and send to. I would love to see what you're what you're concerned about because they're they're probably some of them are quite you know, potentially valid and that's what part of the review. Yeah. I mean, at this point. and one of the things I mean, the rural districts has been eliminated, but right. then it's referenced in several other locations. Those, be, those will be cleaned up. I mean, for part, back to right. So to part run. of this part of this the document has a lot of things in it, and there's a there's an administrative clean process that goes <laughs> part of this, so we have to eliminate things as we, we go along. So this is the document that goes to council. We start a process with council. We and, it, and, and then the codifier, you know, it, it, there's both the attorney and there's a codifier beyond this, and we, we clean things up before the final version goes, to, you know, gets into the books. So we only get to kind of look at approve and request, or not me vote, but others vote on like the rough draft. Essentially, this for this type of document, yeah, it's not a. It, it is definitively, I will tell you, it's, this is the version you're recommending with all the significant majority changes. There's obviously a lot of minor things from a cleanup standpoint that have to be done. There may be other items that come up that council may not agree with what's going to be done. For instance, the council says, hey, we don't like changing the zoning. Right. We're getting rid of all of these things. We're going back to the old zoning. Then that's what they'll do, right? That's what they'll vote on. So, I mean, council may not agree with everything you've done either. I mean, I would assume that a lot of the work has nicely been done by this body. Council will go along probably with most of it and clean it up. I yeah, mean, since you, have, since you have two council members sitting here, I'm assuming, and the mayor, I'm assuming that's how it goes. But not always. Right? And this, I mean, it, it, when you do when you change state law, there's always at the end there's a 
a reconciliation stage that takes place administratively through the codifiers, through the Legislative Service Commission, where they say, well, that doesn't exist anymore, and that, and you know, you went from A to C, so we gotta make it A to B now. It's just in my brain, you're trying to process, like, okay, if I can think of it as a rough draft, it would hey, Yeah, right. this is what we Yeah, do. yeah, so this is, yes, this is, we, we have made the roadmap for them to say, this is what okay. we think this should look like now. There's stuff in here that, that used to exist that flat out shouldn't exist anymore, and then there's stuff that we think we made better. Right. And then they're going to say, you guys nailed this, we love all of this stuff, and we hate this stuff, and we're the ones who were elected, so we're gonna make the final decisions. Right. And then from there, an administrator's gonna come in and make it look all pretty before right. it actually gets, I mean, gets in all. This is what council is actually gonna be looking at, kind of the start, to start yeah. right next week. Right. So we'll be able to look at this and see what's been crossed off on us. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's why we haven't done that version that looks all pretty because okay. we need to have a record of what we, we need to track our changes, right? I just thought maybe it might be easier to show like one page, you know, looking at one page here, like what it used to be like, and looking at the neat, like the clean version. That way, it just it reads a lot smoother and more coherent. Well, you have a, you, you can do that, right? So the problem is, is when you have a document of this size. You can't and you put it next to them. You can't compare right. because they okay. change the format and everything's changed so significantly that you right. you can't be like, oh, what was here? Oh, wait, it's been just been a lot more time. The track change allows you to see the timing and how everything was done, and that's that's the reason from a legal standpoint we do it that way. I mean, many many places we change contracts do it that way. Anything like that of legal nature. I definitely felt like I got a crash course on legalities. <laughs> like learning. <laughs> like, huh. And so, yeah, I mean, and, and I would encourage all of us to try to at least keep tabs on or, you know, be available when the legislative committee gets this to answer questions and clarify and, and make sure that they understand what we were thinking when we, when we made these decisions. But again, ultimately, as is with almost everything planning and zoning, it's our job to make recommendations. Mm -hmm. One question I wasn't clear on, like when somebody's coming up for a variance, right. um, how are their neighbors actually notified? I wasn't real clear on that how that we occurred. A, we as a courtesy send everyone a notification who is a, a directly adjacent neighbor. It, it's a good question. It can be done in multiple ways. I mean, different municipalities can handle it differently. For instance, some have a hard rule that everyone within 250 feet, and that's of the property lines, mm -hmm. gets a notice, right? In our case, our code is silent on that particular rule set, so we as a courtesy to tell all the adjacent neighbors to the parcel owner. Those are people who typically have direct standing to speak to an issue, who could appeal it if they themselves are unhappy with the decision, right? And so that's who we notify right off the bat. If you want to, if council wants to, you know, if you want to, anybody who wants to note this, you can put a hard and fast rule, but generally speaking, we would say the the adjacent, directly adjacent neighbor, all should be notified regardless. Mm -hmm. So even though you're saying time. courtesy, it is act does actually occur. When I see courtesy, it, you know, that could happen, it may not right. happen. But when you're, so is it something that is yes, that we, uh, everybody we is notified? Our code directly as to how the rule should be. So we, we notify people as a matter of course, because okay. they should be notified. So again, that's something that can be added from a discussion mm -hmm. point, and that's actually an excellent point. Everything always comes up. Because we read through this, then it's like all of a sudden things like come back and it's like, wait a minute, what section was that that I reading, remember? Like <laughs> reading the whole document yeah. as a as a whole rather than a piecemeal, and I I saw that too. That it says about um, notify, you know, about the public hearing, but it never said that you had to tell anybody about it. You could just. Yeah. I don't know. Right. That we, and we don't. We have to advertise it. And it didn't and say it where say you had to advertise yeah. it either. It didn't say where you had to advertise it either. Yeah, it does, it, we have to advertise it in, you know, we put it in our newsletter, which some years ago was told that it was okay, but we also put it in the paper. So yeah. we need and to that's know. dictated by state law. Right. Okay, so by state law, a public dispatch. hearing has to be in the county of which the hearing is being held. Yeah, there's there's state law that dictates uh, how, how notification works. And timing, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, so, but the, I guess the thing is, it's like, why don't we put that in here? Why do we make people go look at state law in case state law changes? I mean, it's kind of like, if I'm looking, it's like, and, oh, I'm going to apply for something. And it's like, oh, wow, I need to get this in. Like, But then i got to search five places to see. I get, yeah, I'm... To see how I have to do this, or I have to call and bother Tiffany or Eric and find out. Oh well, if I'm going to have a public hearing, I've got to have it in. Well, I just think of it more from you're. I'm your neighbor. 
and I don't, you know, I don't know that you're doing something. How am I? Am I got to constantly always be looking at the newspaper, to like public notices, to right. find and, us, and, right. to and, know and that? So, because you know, you're not going to be coming over and telling me so because for, you already know part, I might just. We don't have it in our code yeah. because state law changes and actually has changed quite a bit lately on this notification part, and yeah. is likely to change again as things are moving more online. They're having, they're changing requirements right. to say, like again. Who's reading the dispatch? Yeah. Uh, there, are, you know, when a newspaper goes out of business, you can't notify use it to notify anybody anymore. Um, and and so there, I mean, there there is an onus on the the resident to keep an eye on what's going on in their neighborhood. I think that the direct the notification of the direct neighbors is a good practice mm -hmm. if it should be codified. I think I, I don't think I would disagree with that. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Um, but again, you know, we only need to make, we need to make sure that we tell the people who have a direct interest. Right. Yeah, that's who I yeah. think more about is, yeah. yeah, you don't need to tell people to walk away, but yeah, right. those people adjacent immediately neighbors. adjacent. The adjacent neighbors, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a place that put up signs in the front of the property. I feel like that was done for something. I don't remember, I, we didn't do that. I don't remember who did it or what it was for. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it wasn't like a oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. No, the neighbor did it because yeah, she was right. not. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where the um, the municipalities have talked about that that there has to be a, a, a public sign against the public right of way yeah. that says this this would be a zoning change. It'd be a zoning change here, and that's a good way to do it. Yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with like that. And and this was this, this has been discussed in house a couple of times across a couple of administrations. Uh, and it's something again that can be suggested. We have council in here, so I would suggest that when we have a meeting, you know that that's brought up, and we'll be happy to discuss it as well. There's there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, yeah. the simple things are the easiest sometimes, right? Postcards and the sign. And that is typically yeah. what's done. It's a postcard. Yeah. Hmm. There's, different, yeah. there's different things too. I mean, the, the, you have to consider when you have a bigger project. You know, it just depends how you want to do it. If I'm going to change a major roadway, or if the school's doing something that's going to affect traffic in a major way. That may be something that requires a wider net of notification versus you know, my neighbor's putting in a deck that might be a, a foot off you know, to the setback, and that affects this person right here. Not the whole neighborhood, right? There doesn't need to be 10 people in the, the, the thing. It's just, but that's a concern of what the council would like yeah. to do for neighbors. So to, to pause the discussion real quick, we want to get this to council today. What right. I would propose is let's look at this, see if there's anything that that we want to rescind previous discussion on. Anything we want to add, you know, we have two, at this point, effectively liaisons to, to council. Can we send you guys with instructions to say, here's what we've decided, but Planning and Zoning would like you to also take a look at the following things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and so and he has his little, his little thing. We can we'll type it in there. <laughs> so I think certainly to, to take a look at notification. And R twelve is R twelve the. Um, R twelve is the higher density one. That's where the condos are right. over here on condos. The so that's been crossed out throughout the whole. Oh no, it should be still be right. If there was an accident. It should we didn't. But, we didn't yeah, it's it. it's crossed out. Okay. I figured that's it was a mistake, but. It's a mistake. Thanks for noting. No, it has to be, and it's, it's still on the zoning map, so it would have been caught. But yeah, it'll be it, it'll be kept. And then there's. Um, it's not. The codes for the MI section, where are those? Are those in appendix? Those will be, so if you note at the end, there's an appendix that I added at the very end. It, the appendix is to incorporate the plan district for that, so it's, it's actually in writing. Because right now it's not anywhere in the code. Right. The plan district was adopted by council for ordinance. Uh, it's been changed three or four times at this point. Uh, and the, the correct version will be incorporated in the final codified version. It's just, I added that note at the end for the appendix to include that. Right. Okay. There was, um, well, in that, I would just say in that zoning table, if someone's going to go through and clean that up, because right. that, there's a lot of stuff that's um, not crossed out that wasn't showing up. And yeah, it's this one, kept. this one. So there's a, a lot of stuff that should be kept. Such as? 
Well, so this one is that no, I didn't see anything that's been about kept. that. Yeah, the only the thing that's office I, laboratories, research? right? Because those could those could still be those could still be utilized. For example, okay. if somebody redeveloped a piece and a they planned shopping them. center. Uh, was that kept or not? Plan all these right, those, plan any, any plan district, any plan district is still going to be left in the code. Okay. We still have a plan industrial park. Technically, that's the, the storage place. Okay. So yeah, anything that's been remained is remained. <laughs> but then, and then the rural district is being deleted. Right. But then there's other areas where they're referencing that if anything's not to check to look in rural. Right. So that right. So there, there's references. <coughs> And I had a question about there's one of these that allows hospitals. Okay. Do we really want to allow hospitals? And that's going to be a question of, of council, right? Because there's questions of other so, uses. So there, so that's a question you can take to council under the office, suburban office and institutional district. Right. Under institutions, I mean, all these other things are very reasonable. They're like insurance companies and doctor's offices and chiropractors and, you know, health services, legal services, accountants, all that makes sense. Ele institutions, it says elementary schools, colleges, libraries, museums, okay? A hospital seems like way different so, so not, than, so I than that in, institution. I mean, in today's world of medical retail, that, that definition mm -hmm. change. You're thinking of something on a mass scale like St. Anne's, right? In today's world, you can have you can have what? urgent care emergency. Well, yeah, well, the size of, I'm that's the that's size of no, the Aspen market, okay? Yeah. So what if the Aspen market got redeveloped to a, to a multi-floor structure and it was an urgent care of some type, right? Or, or an ER. Yeah. That's a hospital. Or, they, they or the sense. dialysis clinics. Right. Those are mm -hmm. those right. would so, be so, hospitals. So you leave it in there, and, and then if council doesn't want it, they get rid of it. But the fact is, you, you need to have it there because, quite frankly, I think from, a, for, from an economic development use, you want to leave certain things in there because as things redevelop over the time of a city, you can see these things happen in different ways, and it's there in the code when it happens, and it's a good, it's a good, you know, for the village, it's a good asset, and it's a good tax revenue stream. Yeah, I'm thinking that we could have an empty storefront and have somebody say, "Well, I wanted to come and pay taxes in Minerva Park, but I'm going to go over to Northland Mall because they weren't zoned right for me." Sometimes it's just you wish you get these things done. We leave all the plans stuff in there. Some things will have to be redone anyways. I mean, but you don't know until you know. And uh, unless council's got a significant issue with that, I don't think they will. It's just left in the code. Okay. Under the um, home occupation, just a clarification on that, because I was looking up other. Um, other municipalities and what they had for home occupation. So they clear, so like a home occupation, so if I have, say, a gutter cleaning service, but I'm not doing it out of my home, because I have to go to people's houses to do it. That's, so other codes were clarifying home occupation or home-based business. And it seemed to me that saying a home-based business, if you want to include gutter services, mm -hmm. you know, gutter, clean, gutter cleaning people running that out of their house as a home-based business, that it was, it was more clear, like they actually gave a definition of what a home occupation or home-based business was. So if I'm an architect and I'm working from home, is that a home-based business or is that a home occupation? So if you, if, if, so I think the way that this body has recommended it and the way that the Park has kind of handled it in the past, moving forward, I see a little bit more of a libertarian type streak here, right? So if they're trying to give people a little more leeway with how these things run without any major yeah. nuisance issues. Right. So, if I'm, so, so if you're an architect and you've got your own shingle, right, you're working at your home, that's your, that, that, is, that is a combination of home-based business. We got your LLC registered to your, your house and stuff like that. Now, if you work for a firm but you're getting home time work, that's different, different right? So, so what we're talking about strictly is the professional that's an LLC and working out of their home office. It is their home-based business and home occupation. Right. And I was just, and when I, when I read the, like the things that they gave as, you know, that we have listed as examples of home occupations, it's, there were other codes that I, I mean, here's one from, this was from Fairfax, 
and their um, purpose and intent is very is much more clear about saying that it is a right. like if you're a lawyer and you have a business of law like an LLC or something like that but it's a there it's a home based business right. versus saying a home occupation like what's a what's a home occupation yeah. that's a very and we don't even define define it. We just launch into home occupation, blah, 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 like a millinery and a da, 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 and so like odd things. So, or tailor or a millinery. I mean, it's like, okay, but what about the lawyer? What about the accountant? What about the, you know, there's a lot of other things. And I just thought that there were, that that definition could be more clear. That was Sure. The, 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 there's two ways of looking at it. The more clear is pleasure impose more restrictions to less clear. Well, no, I didn't think it was more. Anything. But that's what, that's what, from a definitional standpoint, that's what happens. We have less room for interpretation of what may be someone's business or maybe someone's occupation. So unless this body in the council recommends otherwise, you're, you're producing something that's perhaps more, again, libertarian in nature versus more specified in nature, which you're funneling it down. And correct me if I'm wrong, but that's exactly what the discussion was on, on other types of yeah, and, and, and stuff. The discussion I think that we had was Basically, I don't care what you do for a living from your home. I only care how it bothers your neighbors. Right. And so that's why we were looking at things like how many cars you could have in your driveway, what kind right. of noise you could make and when. So, no, if you were an architect or a lawyer or, uh, you know, a masseuse, I don't care about the architect until you're having... You know, um, at parties. Uh, yeah, the, so, the big so architect I convention. I don't care if you're a no. Right. I only care if what four people are coming to your house and they're blocking the street. So if I clean gutters and I never I go to people's houses to do that, then you don't really care. Not at all. Mm -hmm. okay. not, not that's. I mean, okay. that's that was the the discussion I think that we had toward the beginning and, and kind of my intent anyway was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like let's let's take that that libertarian well, I mean, view of right. whatever right. you want to do until it bothers somebody else, mm -hmm. and so that's why we're looking at the mm -hmm. you know the mechanic and the car detailer and the folks who are making noise, who are taking up space in the street, yeah. and say let's not regulate what they do for a living, let's regulate how they bother their neighbors. With. Right, right. Well, that I mean, I yes, and I recall that discussion, and I was thinking about. Well, I mean, I've heard of other things happening in the village, like people who do have gutter businesses or pressure washing businesses or other of these businesses that just get harassed endlessly because, oh, that's a home occupation, but it's like, but I'm not at my home doing this, right. so I'm not bothering anybody, so why is that Right, so right. hopefully once we clean this up, the okay. person can say, so go away. Okay. <laughs> and okay. you know, you have, you have no standing in code to, to tell me what to do. Yeah, it doesn't matter who's the mayor, is it? Yeah, that we're yeah, just to treat everybody equally. Right. And okay. and in that we're saying, when I live here, I get to have some peace of mind as far as what I hear, what I smell, and, and who keeps me from, from driving down the street. Outside of that, when you're in your house, I don't I don't get so much say. Right. Well, I think it's nice mm -hmm. that we want our neighbors to be able to make a living. Oh, however yeah. they choose totally to. Totally agree. A right. lot of people, you know, even if it's not their full time job, and I'm not picking on you or whatever, but I mean, just being able, no, just being able to go and do some construction jobs, you know, whether it's a side job or whether it's this or that. I mean, who am I to <clears throat> say you can't do that out of your house? You can't answer the phone in your house because you're technically doing it out of your house, or you know, yeah. I mean, you, like he said, you're starting to get to the point that you're picking and choosing. Like, nobody would know what I was doing inside my. I mean, I. I'm a realtor, so what, if I answer the phone and talk real estate inside my house, I'm running a real estate office out of my house? No. I mean, I have an office, but I do answer my phone in the house, so what is that? So, so I it's really that. not what the business, like what Brady was saying, we're not regulating what the business right. is or what you're going to do, it's just how it's affecting right. your neighbors yeah. right. is the, really the intent yeah. of that part of the code. Yes. So all these other interpretations that people bring up about, well, what about this or what about right. that? Like, if the person is repairing their lawnmowers, it's right. not an issue until it starts to bother until somebody. Right. Yeah. And when they, and when they are, or, right, and when they're too loud doing it, we have a noise ordinance. And when they start too early doing it, we have a noise ordinance. Or they've pieces of the mower everywhere. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. right. And, or, yeah. or when they say, okay, I've got a month's worth of uh, mowers done. Everybody come <laughs> pick them up uh, Friday at noon. 
yeah. and and there's a line down the street. But that's what we're you know yeah. that's what we're looking yeah. to address. So yeah, to to just say we we don't care what you do for a living. Right. We only care how okay. it bothers us. So really then leaving it the more elusive interpretation right. of home occupation rather than home based business. It's like yeah, we don't we don't need to make that because it doesn't have any bearing on. It. We don't need to make that designation because it doesn't have any bearing on anything. I think having that safety bumper is like a good thing because if somebody is getting loud and doing something, even as a hobby or being crazy about it, you can go back and be like, hey, look, we have this rule here. You're not being basically we'd be respectful towards your neighbors, and I think that's kind of important. And when I first you know was reading this, I think my biggest learning curve was understanding you know like. These are kind of like legal, kind of written like insurance documents. Like, I'm taking it very literal. Um, maybe I'm not explaining that right. It's, I think it's good to have, like, these protocols and these, these rules in the place in case someone is going crazy and parking, you know, tractor trailers across their yard and, <laughs> right, you know, they're cleaning cars and blocking the sidewalk and doing crazy. I'm just throwing out random examples, you know. But at the same time, like, this lawnmower stuff, Kids selling Girl Scout cookies and lemonade. Like this whole neighborhood has always supported small businesses, helping the neighbor. Right. Like we don't look at it like that's a home. Like I never was at like a home occupation. That's just someone helping out a fellow neighbor because maybe maybe they know how to do like a handyman or something, and they can come over your house and fix your drywall. I don't know. This yeah. I mean, this Mineral Park has been a community knit kind of thing. I think these rules are for those people that come in the neighborhood, maybe newbies, and might start breaking rules and. You know, we can we have these, you know, to kind of go and say, hey, and leaving it loose, I think it's a lot better. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a musician. I get paid sometimes, but I certainly don't make money. So if I'm just playing drums for fun in my basement, then that's not a home occupation. But if I have band practice, getting ready for a gig, it is. But either way, if I'm too loud, I'm breaking the code. It has nothing to do with anything but I'm being too loud. Yeah, and yeah. And, right. And so that's... And most of these that's really, the point, right? Is that, <coughs> like you say, um, like we're not gonna run around going to people's houses and making sure they're doing what these are gonna be complaint <laughs> driven type things, usually to the police, maybe to the yeah. uh, yeah. the code guy or something like that. Um, although you know, this brings up another kind of question who's the liaison that talks to that person? In case something like that. Or the police officer. Yeah, depending on what it is. Right. So what's this so this piece here that's no other vehicle, no truck other than a one van type truck shall be used in connection with a home occupation. So if I have like a pickup truck, I can't I, use that. Is I that? I think that was kind of going back to say the company vehicles that you have on. Um, what, what page? Are that you? oh, that's on page oh, one seventy four. Yeah. Because I, I think we did have a discussion about yeah, about trucks that. and vans. I and it was changed to like three or something. Maybe not. Well, there was. I know we talked about the number, yeah. and then we talked about yeah. We didn't care if they had a sign on the side of their right, vehicle. Right. It wasn't going to bother me. If which had. which section are you looking at? Um, so that's under section H on one seventy four. It's like the last sentence. It says about. It first says about you know no trucks vans shall be parked in your yeah. side or open yards. And that all makes sense. Right, and then, um, but then the last sentence: no truck other than a one van type yeah. truck shall be used in connection with a home occupation. And I'm thinking, oh, so then, like, the dude that's a contractor that's got some ladders on his truck or has a pickup truck, he can't use that or something? No. Is, well, I, that's, I, that's I think issue. that strike out just didn't go far enough. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because okay. I think yeah. that was... Because I thought yeah, we had yeah, talked yeah, about yeah, that, and I was like... We didn't want to regulate the vehicle necessarily. Right. Okay. Um, we, we had discussed different people yeah. to talk to council about regulation of the street weights and things like that, right? Not, no. not of what they yeah. have. Well, I think this day and age, you're, everything is just so different now. I mean, what do you what do you tell the Uber driver or the DoorDash driver that's driving around, but yeah, that's their work vehicle, but yeah, it's their personal vehicle, right. and like, I, like, there's just so many different things nowadays compared to what it used to be when this code was probably written that you can't tell the guy that has, I mean, you can, but you shouldn't tell the guy that has the AEP truck, but yet you're letting the DoorDash guy park his car, but he's working out of it, so what's the difference? Mm -hmm. Like, besides the vehicle. 
Well, not necessarily. Well, and unless it's not, right? If I drive, if I drive Uber truck. in my transit. I'm just thinking of like a bucket truck, you know, parking lot. <laughs> I just, I actually have this. Although no, there, is, there is a section, I did see that one, about cement trucks and, And, and again, you know, you're that talking at a different level. Well, I'm talking right. about just like the yeah. AEP, like the regular pickup truck or like the regular little van. Yeah. Like, uh, like what's the difference mm -hmm. if you have the guy that's driving some... A, a van to deliver. I think we talked about that. Yeah. Non commercial yeah. place versus mm -hmm. non commercial. Yes. Right, which yes. 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 we'll take up a yeah. council for that yeah. specific stuff. So that, that gets in the police code within on the yeah. street. So. Okay. Are we? Can can we all quickly just vote to amend H to cross out that last sentence? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. All, all of this I will re-listen re to the minutes and we'll make adjustments. To okay. It before it gets to legislative. I just yeah, I want to make sure if we're going to vote on something that we're all on the same page of what we're voting on. Right. So this is this is an actual change to the draft that we're going to okay. vote on from now on. And then we also have recommendations that you guys are going to carry. We're going to so. we're going to write them one yeah. at a time. <laughs> we're going to type them. One at a time. You want me to type them? Can you get it over here? Okay. Did you have more thoughts, Beth? Oh, I don't know. I did have a thought on the on trees. And I know we discussed that an earlier, like last summer, we were talking about like the tree lawn in the MI section and what could and couldn't happen there. And then we were talking about in like the old, you know, the old section or the legacy section or whatever we're calling it, like that there's like the 12 foot right away there. And this just kind of just says trees and tree lawn, but it doesn't define what a tree lawn is or the size of a tree lawn or say anything about planting trees necessarily in the right of way. So it's like if, if we're redoing the zoning code at this point, is there some kind of language we could clarify like that first 12 feet is the so villages and you shouldn't be planting trees in that. No, because it's, it's the right of way and, and that's not how, it, it, not how it works. The right of way sends up into the yards and right. that's designated by plat, right? It's on the plat. And so it's one of those things to where it can be defined as what you can and can't do, but that's something for council has already talked a little bit about trees and tree lines. That's going to be a, something that comes up under a longer discussion with them. It's, you're welcome to make a recommendation, but it's already on the radar. So that discussion, the, the, the in my section here, has those things strictly defined for right. the tree belong in front of each house. The legacy section does not, and they may well want to leave that alone, and so we left that alone. So you want to make a recommendation? So that recommendation has already been to council and they're looking at it now? They've already or? talked about it okay. and they, they want to continue to take it up is what they have basically Well, said. I'm just thinking if we're reissuing a code that that would be the time to just like put that in here. I don't think anyone knows what it's going to be. It's a bit of a hot topic too to some degree. So trees, tree maintenance, there may get changed in the, in the new section. So it's, well, a, it's a whole discussion in and of itself. Make a recommendation. I'll put it on, well, put it I would on my list. I mean, just like, okay, just like, if you make up something like from here on out, this day forward, you know, anything planted in the first 12 feet has to... There's a, there's a, some, some agree with this way, some agree with no, this way, okay. so it, it right like now, you said, it's kind of a hot topic. Oh, so it's between, the, right now, between particular you can people. find a tree on your yard, you can plant it within the right of way or outside of right around the private, what's it to the private property, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Either way, it's fine. It, yeah. it, and it's the way it's been handled for ever. Right. Here, right. right? So, but wouldn't the tree in the right of way need to be a certain size? Not necessarily because there's no sidewalks. Where it's necessary is when you're putting in a tree lawn between the sidewalk and a uh, curb. We, you know, in the older part of the village, you don't necessarily have curves, and you definitely don't have sidewalks. Right, right. but so, but then so then what about defining like lot trees of a certain size in okay. such a distance from the sidewalk? So so again, done the and done when we have sidewalks. Not done in the old section because there's no sidewalks at this time. The council right. wants to discuss that, and they will. The, this is not adjusted at this moment because it's it's a legacy section. It's left right. as it is. It has not been an issue. Council may leave it as is, or they may make adjustments to, to spe specifically what's from the roadway to the end of the right of way right there. And so that's within that 12 ish, 15 feet mm -hmm. from the edge of pavement, right? That's and again, besides the tree planted there, because I thought the right. big so, trees overhanging the streets were an issue. That, that we have, if you know you're driven and live in the old section, and there's plenty of old <laughs> trees that hang over into right. the out of the street. And so right at this point in time, it's been that way for a long time. And I personally, not being a village resident, see that as an asset to your village. 
the way that things have happened in the, in the legacy section. The council may disagree and may change it. But right now, nobody's altered in the last 70 years. So apparently, no branches fall on anybody and killed them or hurt a car. No. Mm -hmm. So it's not become an issue. No, that's, that, that's, that's why we're not discussing this issue and leaving it up to council. <laughs> that's the, yeah, that's the, that's the council's prerogative okay. as to how they want to handle that. Okay. So I just, I've been thinking, like, no one, man. I really like how you're kind of looking at this because some of the discrepancies you've seen, I kind of noticed those too when I was reading through it. Um, and I know this is like a rough track, but I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking the more planning zoning kind of gets it the way planning zoning kind of wants it to go to council, the more finalized it is, wouldn't that make it easier on council to approve it faster? No, or, because no? they will probably no. tear it, uh, and this is just me saying, because they'll probably tear it apart too. Yeah. They well, will spend months tearing we're, yeah. what oh, they right. don't. Yeah, is that pretty accurate? They will do. Well, now that you're now that it's an incomplete document, mm -hmm. she was looking at me, so I respond to her. I know you don't want her to get involved. Speech, but that's not me. It's, um, okay. Gosh. What was this? What was the first? Um, first. I don't believe it's an incomplete. I, I'm going to say this. I don't believe it's an incomplete document. I feel like we have a lot of good things that were, right. you know, we've, we've done this for, I don't know how many weeks now, we've months. been doing this for months, months. Um, and we have really gotten to the point that there are very few things that were, yeah, I think we've gone through it three or four times and we've pulled out a couple things each time. Um, and there there are things that we have left alone because we know that council's going to have opinions that are strong enough that no matter what it's we not think, they're going to come um, up with something. So that, that just makes me depressed. It's like we spent all this time doing this, and now it could all be changed back to the <laughs> it way it was. Be. That's the problem. I, mean, that's, I, 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 you know, I do this for a living. It's the legislative process. You, you, your, your goal is I to make things as good as they can be. And so you know, if you want to have the final say, then, then you got to run for council. No, I feel like there's been a lot of, number one, this has been a discussion for a very long time that it needed done, and council is very aware that it needed done, and they wanted the adjustment, they want the adjustments done, um, because they don't like the variance issues any more than anybody else does, so I feel like, I mean, honestly, I feel like everything that we've put in there and the time that we've spent on there, I don't think they're going to go back and change, but I, like some of your points, will they make things a little bit I'm going to say, I'm going to use the word stricter, um, adding some of these additional things that you've recommended, they may do. Yeah. So, you know, in my mind, I feel like some of these things, the reason that we are trying to give, some of us really would like residents to be able to have more of a say so in the house that they're doing, you know, keeping in mind they have neighbors, but also realizing that people also have a life and they would like to be able to do things to their home and they would be able to right. live in their home and be able to do work out of their home the way that they want to do it without having, you know, people pounding on their door every day saying, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. We all pay property taxes, we all pay all that kind of stuff and some of us don't want to be hounded 24-7 about every little nitpicky thing. If we did, we'd go move to New Albany or Dublin. Um, so, you know, we really do there are residents that would prefer we didn't do this. I mean, in all honesty, some, some residents do want the village to not allow the site of a trash can or not allow this or not allow that. You know, it, it's trying to keep that balance to where we don't allow residents to have trash everywhere, but in the same sense, um, allow people a little bit of leeway. And I feel like you guys have done a lot of that, giving residents a little bit more um, leeway to be able to do the thing to live or and not to make use the property. Yeah, yeah, or not. Uh, there's some parts of the code that seemed like they were so specifically directed at. Right. That's people. that's and one thing that, that I'm really excited about is if if we can get the spirit of of what we've done yeah. Yeah. put in there, mm -hmm. then there's years of frankly injustices that are going to be undone, yeah. and okay. and right. that yeah. that makes me excited. So, so we're not going to get everything we want, but if. Yeah. If we can get, you know, if we can get a good chunk of it, and we've done a lot of really good things for a lot of folks. I and I think yeah. council, I mean, and just from listening to the things that they have done in the last couple of years, I really feel like they're going to take this and move forward with the changes that you guys have done, and maybe tweaking some things a little bit, and maybe, you know, adding, again, like the variance, just getting it put in there. There's no reason not to with something like that. Because we already do it. We already notify, so why not just put right. it in there? Right. But we've got to leave it a little bit of a leeway in case Ohio changes theirs to where we're not going to try to adjust ours every time Ohio makes a change. So just that balance. Yeah.
like I can just say, it's been an honor and privilege working with everyone here that's been a part of this rewrite. And this rewrite has actually been something that I've been for what two, three years now, kind of been wanting to be a part of. And it's just for me, it's like a blessing. I think like having everyone here as a team and finding these problems and, and like making everything fair and just and people looking back five, ten years from now. And we can say, we did this together. Right. We're the dream team. Like, we made this right. <laughs> uh, because I can tell you, 44 years of living here, there's been some things that are not quite up to par, so to speak. Right. And to be part of fixing this, like, everyone's played a really good role. And, I mean, I said, you know, putting the council or whatever. I didn't, I didn't know how it kind of works, so that's why I kind of said that. Not that so with, I apologize. Oh, I just, no. I think with um, the red lines and stuff like that, it really helps them get an idea, mm -hmm. and, you know, doing it that way. Versus giving them a plain Oh, room. no, I, I think, think that's it's good to go yeah. through and see, oh, what did that say? Or there was, right. like, there's sections like like that whole thing with the rural. Like, right. it says I, refer to rural, and I'm like, but yeah, the rural yeah. stuff is, like, gone, but it's referring back to it. So it just, that's like, you can see, oh, right. that was just, like, that just needs cleaned up. See, I, I, I like that thing. common sense attitude. Like, we need, right. you know, like, someone needs to look at it like that and say, hey, uh, you know. And, yeah. And yeah, I mean, we've got, like, we've got the sign code stuff in here. That right. council yeah. has never looked at. Oh, they haven't looked at. That. Well, we were getting ready to present it to them, and then they're like, "You know what? We need to fix the right. whole code." And we're like, "Cool, oh. we've already got oh. one section taken okay. care of." Right. And so, just you know, imagine a year from now, driving up Cleveland Avenue and looking into those, you know, into the the strip malls there, and and <clears throat> having it just look that much nicer. And knowing I'm totally forgot about that. That's been so long. That's how right? That's well, I was exciting. right now. I was reading that stuff in the sign in there, and I was like, well. We talk about all this science. Yeah, that's, that's our language. Oh, okay, so that's and, and I guarantee we were much more thoughtful on it than council has the time or energy to be. Right, and that's a lot of it. I think they're going to see they're going to see the guidance that you guys have put in there, the things that you guys really wanted to change, and I I, I think they're going to appreciate the things that you guys went in and adjusted, or we went in and adjusted because they're going to get the idea of where you guys were going with certain things by looking at. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think they will. Yeah. And again, Brian's been a part of this. We now have him on there. You have myself on there. Um, so once we start going through it with PNZ, I really think we'll get an idea of where we're at and what, what you guys were, the spirit of what you guys were trying to do. Yeah. I really like, you know, like what you said, like, you know, I want to probably bring that up too. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you have well, some minutes? Can I be a devil's advocate on one more thing? Yeah. I'm so, free to do it now and then next week. Yes, well, okay, so I was looking at, so I know we talked about the whole legacy section and how it was just all, like, so crazy, just, like, making a plan, sec making a plan development. So when I was going through and looking at all the other ones and I'm looking at the site and I'm like, well, that makes anybody that builds anything have to come in and get a variance? Not for your, not for your uh, non major stuff. So when we say that, it's the pioneers, your fences, your sheds. It's not a variance either. So it's, it's you. Well, you have to come in and acting, meet with somebody right. to get approval. It's, right. you, it's you acting as um, staff in this case. So if you've got, if you've got items that are, uh, you know, I'm adding an addition. If I'm building a house now in the legacy section, if I'm Adding anything of major significance to the lot, if I want to pay a significant portion of my lot, you know, make it, you know, so if I want to coverage. add a garage yeah. or add in a screen in porch right. or anything that I'm adding on, right. I have to come in here and get it. Right, that. because in, in almost in all the cases that we looked at, in fact, I think the vast majority is up on Jordan Road, you're going to run into an issue um, with a variance related issue, a setback, first and foremost. Every single lot is non conforming just by size of the code in the R3, right? So this makes everything conforming, number one. And number two, you, you I, act I, as... I understand what that is. Right? Okay. So, so in this particular case, since you understand good, it allows you to work as administrative staff. You approve it. They avoid a variance. Because all these cases require the on the, the honors steps of going through a variance, having your neighbors, you know, it's still technically appeals to get them by ruling, but it's different. You know, we don't have to advertise. We don't have to do the, all the waiting and, and it can be it can be done more for a resident. It makes a lot more sense. It makes it easier to quite frankly handle. You're saving people time. And it's, it's so so. so but, to, let me just back. So that's one way to do it. Another way would be so when you go through and start looking at all the lots, and uh, and you look at like I don't know it was an R four district it was like seventy five feet wide. Well, what if we just made like an R five district that was 
what? 65, 50 feet wide. Because they're, they're, they're even more varied yeah, than yeah. that. Like we well, would right, I know, but that's, but that's the minimum. Hours. Okay, so, but that's the minimum, 50. So that somebody, like, if they have a large lot and they're putting in a garage and it meets the side yard, the front yard, the size of the lot, the, you're you right. don't have to do anything but go get your permit. Right. Well, you're and you're right. I mean, let those out. Those are called Jordan Rose lots. Well, yeah, but but look at all these other people. Those are just a few. But I you could make a new majority. one. I went to the vast majority. We had this discussion. I don't know. I no, I was here did. and I okay. had it and I looked at it and right. I was going through and I was looking at. Okay, what does that mean, really? So that means that like any like if I I added a screen in porch and it fit in fine. It didn't go through any. Didn't you know? I have plenty of room on my lot. There's a lot of people who don't. And it, so just change the code so it's smaller and then more people don't have to come in. Instead of having every single person who does anything on their lot now has to come in and, do, and meet with somebody so rather you, than saying 50% don't have to. It's in any way, it's a review process. Just like if I had to review it, this body is reviewing it. It's, the, it, it's essentially the same thing. But by all means, change it up now, make it, I'd say make Make uh, 4,000 square foot the, the minimum lot size, and I'd say make it 40 foot wide. No, you don't have to be ridiculous. So, you well, well, but that's what you have to do to make them all fit. And, and so, well, I'm not I, saying I, let me, they let me, all have to fit, but what about 50% of them fitting? So that 50% of the people don't so, have okay, to fit. Okay, it's an administrative nightmare. Right, because I've got I've got some lots in the south, and just like I went over on the street, but that I've got some wouldn't lots be any different than section. what we have now. That's why it makes it so much easier. But but by all means, I'm not the decider. So, so I, I want to make sure that we understand that, that the approval that planning and zoning does of these legacy applications does not follow a variance right. hearing. It's going to be, we will get the application, this is my understanding, right. we will get the application on Monday and then a week and a half later we will all be in this room and say, this was the application. Did everybody at least Google map it or drive by the house? Let's be rational here. This looks fine, right? And then we say, yeah, this looks fine. And we stamp it and, and, and then it, that's the end of it. There's no big ceremonious hearing or anything. It's done that way because when, when, when all the lots are cookie cutter, right? Then you say, does the cookie fit in the cutter? And when right. it does, yes, the administration, the council decided administration approves that. But n not enough of these lots are cookie cutter to be able to make any sense of it. Right. And so we take a body of common sense people to look at them and say, yeah, this isn't going to bother anybody. And my, my re recollection is some of those are still able to be done without us administratively. It's only ones that effectively change the shape of the... The, the, but see, that's the not the way, the but it wasn't it's, written it's, that way. It's anything, it's anything where you have something, the things that are kept out, so fences, patios, the little things, right? Right. Between you have structures, right. accessory structures, where you've got building structures. They're changing your square footage, effectively. Right. Like, you're that's your right. Lot coverage. You're doing things that affect the, affect the things that were already non were a problem with the non conforming situation in the, in the majority of the village, right? That's the issue. And so, Putting it, making them all plan district makes them all conforming, number one. So everybody's got their insurance coverage without having a problem there, which is something happened, which is what we always try to do with variances anyways, make them conforming. And two, be able to give this body, you know, a, you know a, as a group, the, the administrative review of these, just like we would, but all of these, it eliminates the need for variances because they'd have to come in front of your recommendation to the council. It's an onerous process, right? It takes longer. So this, this eliminates almost all of these that come before you have to have variances, three or four variances anyways, every time they come before you change something in the structure, right? This eliminates that. So makes it easy. Well, and it just says must come before the planning and zoning commission for a site plan approval. Right. So that to me when I read that it's like they have to show up and have a like a hearing before. They have a discussion, you review it, you ask questions, they okay. have an answer. Just like just like I review something and I would call and ask questions, I go out to the site, I review it. It's the same type of deal. Okay. So I guess that's, I, yeah, well. And, and we can also, you know, sorry, I'll, the, the timing of this is, you know, folks will submit things and then 
Eric, the administrator, whoever, can pass them right through. We can all have plenty of time to look at them. And then three days before the meeting can say, has everybody had a chance to look at this? Does anybody have any questions of the applicant? And if we don't, we can have the administration call out to them and say, nobody has any questions for you. So don't show up. There's no, there's, there's nothing to do at all. And then we all show up and we say, okay, we've got nine of these to rubber stamp because this all makes common sense. Or we say, this dude's getting way too, like, did you drive past this? This guy's getting way too close to his neighbors. Does anybody else have an issue with this? In that case, there's a next step that's triggered where they have to come in and, and you know, we have a, effectively a variance here. <coughs> I, I think, like, the reason, another reason why we have, like, in the legacy section is because these lots are so, they're breaking oh. almost, it's so contradictory, like, how do we talk about I, I don't disagree with that. I, with any of, like, having people come in, getting them all conforming, that they're all different sizes. I was just trying to think of a way, like, do we have to have everybody, but everybody that wants to do anything go through that process? No. And it was trying to think, okay, well, if you made a code that was smaller and streamlined it and 50% of the people didn't have to, that's all I, that's all I was looking at is, like, is there another way without just throwing the baby out with the bath water and scrapping everything that was there and saying, okay, well, we're just going to make a plan, period. And, and, and right, I remember, so. you know, Eric saying that we, we looked at those and it's, you know, if your lot size is this, then there's still the issue of front and side and backyards yeah. and driveway widths and driveway distance from the lot line yeah. and there's just not, not enough houses that look enough the same to actually come up with, to, to start to whittle that down. So then maybe it's more, maybe there needs to be... Uh, and, well, and maybe it hasn't been flushed out yet, and I suppose this will be one thing council will go through, but it seems maybe you guys sound like you've had more of a discussion about how it's going to roll out and happen than what we had in our... Uh, about a month ago. In, yeah. our, yeah, we, we, in our group here. Yeah, I mean, I've attended them all, and I don't think it was quite... I don't think it was that detailed. Mm -hmm. I don't know it's on the screen. It's on the screen. Okay. So, <coughs> anyways, because of the council, if there are, if you have a specific suggestion about how to handle, by all means, prepare something and give it to okay. the council. <coughs> also, if you want to put that, we, I put a significant amount of thought and time. We had a, a significant discussion, and it seemed like at the time the best solution to be able to handle it that way. So, there could always be a better way. Pretty sure council's more than entertaining any great idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, Do you have anything you want to? Nothing else for me. Okay. Um, so before we vote, since this is a regular meeting, our rules give two minutes to anybody from the public who wants to say anything about the code. Two minutes? Mm -hmm. That's what the rules are. All right, I'm going to have to speed talk. Can I go? Yeah. Oh, you need to get the timer out. No, Starting. Oh, I've got no timer. I'm so freaking fired up right now. I, first off, I'd like to thank Beth for spending the time to go through this. You know, it's obvious to me that she's the only one here that understands what the what we're trying to accomplish here. Now, the, I went through it, and I will agree with the mayor when she said that that all the changes that I see in there are great changes, and I don't think I change any of them. But what I would also, as I'm trying to point out, there are so many more inconsistencies and direct conflicting codes in here. And I'll send out emails because I only got two minutes. I was hoping I could talk to you guys longer than that, but we'll send, I'll send emails to everybody to cover the things I can't talk about in my two minutes. The first thing you guys need to look at and think about is this new development uh, or the new district that he's creating. I have never seen a, a, a district described without having the permitted uses. You guys don't even put in there that you're a, the, what the permitted uses are. Every oh, single yeah. code you will ever see in the state of Ohio, the first thing they will put are what the permitted uses are. And Eric's come up with this unbelievable scheme to, like she's alluding to, that just in the new, in the, the, the new district that you're talking about, you're going to make all the people that do anything go to planning and zoning and get that approved. Eric's got some, com some compulsion with non-conforming uses. He is completely exaggerating how this impacts the process of getting a permit approved. 
Because you can have non-conforming. Non-conforming uses are completely allowed. It's, it's like the grandfather. That's grandfathered in. It's grandfathered in. And all the changes that people would need to make have to do that, that aren't conforming have nothing to do with where you're allowed to build a house or how close it is to the property line. The thing that you've eliminated in this is the eight foot distance between the property line and the structure that you're about to build. Like I said, guys, you know, I'll talk to you on the way out the freaking door if that's what we're gonna have to do. Because th this is a wreck, which you guys, and like JP had said, <coughs> is that you really should get put forth the best product you can before you send it to PNC or to the council. Thank you. You know, right. So, and this is what I was hoping, Brady. Okay. I'm not, I'm not talking about anything unimportant. But you're going to cut me off to, because I talked for two minutes. Fine. Well, we I'll have send to out give everybody email. the same. We have to give everybody the same. So, okay, go ahead. Oh, did we restart the timer? Did we restart? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't think I need two minutes. I was just going to say, I've, I've sat here for a few of these now, and I think that some of the things that have been discussed are being rediscussed. And I know that there's such a thing as analysis paralysis, right? You get stuck looking at it so long that you go cross-eyed like you said, JP, and just even moving it on to council, getting a fresh set of eyes on it. It's not like you as all citizens here won't have feedback and PNZ, you've got a little bit more weight than citizens, but that's okay. Um, but it also gives citizens a chance to start entering the conversation too. So I'm, I'm excited to see it move forward to that next step. I would love to see the whole 175 page code and try to sort it out too. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think moving it on and letting everybody else start entering that conversation not that they can't show up here for two minutes, but I think that that's progress, um, and I look forward to seeing it. And you guys have also done a great job going cross-eyed for months, so I appreciate that as a citizen. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you, both of you. Is it going to be sent out to the public before it goes to it's posted? At the time? Oh, it is posted? Show me where. later. Show me where. It's all... It, it, yeah, we just posted as part of the should when it goes to council. It, oh, it goes it's to it's posted as part oh, of their the agenda package. package. Okay, I thought, I thought it was right now. It's not already posted. No, no, no. It's posted. Okay, okay, okay. okay. No, because it's not going for PNC. That's why I love okay. that rough draft explanation because I just think of, like everything we're doing is like here's our handwritten document. Go ahead and type it halfway up. I gave you what I thought was it. If you don't like it, then go fly like, kite. Okay. Yeah. As long as it's correct. Okay, I'm going to back up for eight seconds and just, um, before giving you what you want me to give to council, myself and JP, um, we're going to just, I, I just put the tree line trees in here. I know it's, it's an ongoing discussion, so, but I have it in here. Um, how we're going to notify residents about a variance, who we're going to notify. I basically just said that it's not in the code. Do we want it in the code right now? We just, you know, what do they want to do with it? But this is their reminder to look at it. Um, what were some of the other, because we've kind just of talked. To, just to complete the strike, the strike through, uh, which was a mistake in that one second. Oh, and R12. Right. That's. And the and sure the R12 is still in there, which is yeah. supposed to be. R12. Page 174, is that correct? On that cross out? There was something on page 174. Oh, yeah. That was the vehicle. One. Oh, that was the one. That was the one type of van type vehicle in your driveway. Mm -hmm. That was to strike that. R12. That is on page 62. That section, urban residential districts. That's still valid. Page 62. Yeah, that's okay. still valid. I just wanted to put it in here. Sorry. Yeah. I had a quick question. Page 175, if I may, on the pools. Like it said, you kind of had a permit to get a pool installed, service. And so forth, the maintenance. My question is, like, do you really have to have like a maintenance, like um, a permit to put like a filter in? Is that considered maintenance? So it's part of that. That all, all that mechanicals that go in require a building permit. Right? Oh, okay, so if yeah, you put yeah. all that stuff in, you're going to have to get a building permit. So. That's so it was a type to go back to actually maintain. Yeah. So if you put a new ground pool in, you're going to have to. Yeah. You have to. You have to have a system. Right. It's all got to be inspected and approved. And, and, County handles handles some of that stuff, so that's not all of it. Because I think yeah, it said something about maintenance. You know, like man, if I gotta get a permit, yeah, I don't want to change. The pool filter. You don't need a permit to change the pool filter. I, yeah, but I mean that's why. I think that's why. Yeah. You're like, ah, I 
It's going to be interpreted as every time I want to do. You just keep that back of your head, and it'll be a council, part of the council discussion. Bring that up. <laughs> because they're going to go through that, and they're going to ask questions. It's, 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 it's brand new code. It was stuff we stole from Columbus. Yes. Yeah. So that's yeah, going to be pretty much pulled out that word for word from Columbus. Yeah. So. I kind of I like a lot of the whole. I read that. I was like, oh, pretty. <laughs> like you know. Um, Beth, is there anything real quick? Like you, no, I think that was all that um, the trees notifying about the variance, the van, R12. Trees, you got trees. I got trees. Got it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think if there's anything on. And then if there's other updates that you guys want, yeah. I mean, we're going to go back through and listen to the meeting minutes and all of that as well. So if there was something else that was mentioned, um, again, council's going to have this for three months probably. So it's a matter of just getting everybody involved and making sure that it's the best that we can possibly do. One other administrative item, um, and it doesn't have to be considered tonight, but Chapter 14, if you recall, is part of this. Yes. We had dropped Chapter 14 after making changes to it about six weeks ago or two months ago. Um, so because council is going to have plenty to do with Chapter 12, right. we can bring Chapter 14 back up on the 15th, and you guys can review it again uh -huh. and pop back up. More code revisions. So <laughs> <You're> excited. <laughs> That one, that one, most of what happened there is you pulled, you pulled stuff out and you stuck it in the chapter 12 right. where appropriate, and it was just leaving the maintenance code alone. So really, it's more about what was deleted out of that section. And chapter 14, 1480 was left to look in, in taxes as a newer code. Okay. So. Will they be talking about this um, first thing? Legislatively next week, Thursday. Okay, so. Yeah, if you pop it up. Thursday is at, if they pop it up, Thursday at 6.30 or 6 or 6.30? I don't know what it was, it was 6.30. Um, they least. will start. More than likely talking about this, just remember that you have the notes because I will not be in that. Okay, so I bring this up in the. In the yes, yeah. Eric will be there. Hold yeah. on, too. Okay, Eric will be there. And he'll probably remember it anyway. <laughs> if not, it'll, it'll be the next. Right. And whether or not they have time to talk about it or not. Is there a motion to recommend this code rewrite section to council? Are you making a motion to? I'm asking you if there is one. Yeah. You want me to make a motion to move this up to chapter 12, including the zoning map? Yep. Up, to the up to council. Okay. And then a second. Second. Okay. 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 Yeah. okay, and we will do a voice vote. Uh, Mayor? Do you want me to do the roll call? I can do it. Okay. No. Um, yes. Uh, Beth McFarland, yes. Terry O'Connor, yes. And Brady Oxender, yes. J.P. Martin, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> 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 we get to vote for sure. We just vote the next three times. Oh, the next three times. I apologize. Oh, is, is Brian not going to be on this? Brian's he is. We, we, that's something that council needs to figure out. Yes, who's going to do But see, but technically, Brian is here until the end of his terms, end of this yes. year, by, by, right. by statute. So Brian is here through this there's year. No, there's no He's mechanism, mechanism to swap out committee members. Uh, they can uh, they're, they're only the, the council okay. the council rules allow for that to happen. They changed that rule a couple of years back, so it could could happen. He, he could res could resign. Just mentioned. So. It's up to, up to him if you want okay. to stay. And then, yeah, just to make clear, yeah. and, and I can't imagine that there's any ethical or other conflict of interest with a non voting member also being a council member. No, there's absolutely not. Okay, cool. Well, if you want to stay, then I, I, I want to have it. I think it would help. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. everyone make things go smoother. Yeah. Cool. Um, is there any additional business, <coughs> any new business that anybody would like to discuss? Next week is March 15th. We're going to do March 15th, and we will look at section 14 of the code. And Eric is going to send out section 14 by the Wait. end of this week. Right, it'd be pretty fast since it's all done. <laughs> and then we will have all the time in the world to take a look at it. Now, remember, we did. I think as a group start diving into that a little bit and basically we, we had pulled some out. Yeah, we, we had thoughts flow. to move a lot around, but I don't know how much work we did on what's left and how much work might need to be done. Right. So everybody put on your thinking caps for uh, about a month from now. Right. Is there it's any more after fourteen? No, that's it for the Sony code. Anything else for yeah, code we'll we'll by council Okay. Um, any other business? We are adjourned. Eight twenty six, Tommy. I want to know who.